So we're going to go ahead and do some real talk for a second <clears throat> and answer some questions that I wanted to answer in a live stream, but I just can't find the time to do that currently, but hopefully that'll come to an end soon. So I've been asked a few things. Uh, recently, if any of you have been paying attention or anything like that, you'll know that I was removed from the Octane rendering group on Facebook, and I've been meaning to get off of Facebook for a long time, mostly because of, it's it's just AIDS, it's just toxic, um, and it's it's no good for anybody in my opinion. It's It's better to come together as a people in person rather than pretend like we care about each other virtually. And I know I say that in a time where like COVID is running rampant and people can't actually get out to see people, but Facebook has been around well before COVID was around. And I think we've lost touch as a people uh, with each other more so than ever because of this. Um, and the reason why I was kicked out of that Facebook group is one, it got toxic there too, uh, politically and socially. And when I join these groups, I want to join for the technology, for the art, for the people who can provide input. Um, but when post after post after post has nothing but political garbage, social garbage, things like that, things that just should not be infecting the, um, the current state of things, I guess, or rather the industry, uh, 3d, um, and 3d art rendering the technology behind it has put us far and beyond what, uh, we were as a people before we can express ourselves in ways that we never could express ourselves before, which is fine. And the technology for that is there and you can do what you want with it. But I believe in my opinion, obviously it's just an opinion is, is that you keep your politics and you keep your social gripes out of that industry as a technology. And I was removed because I didn't agree with a particular political mindset that that group had as its, as a whole. Um, and a bunch of other things. Um, they were posting things that were not necessarily true about certain people. Um, and I'm not going to get into details on that. So to level the playing ground, regardless of how I felt, whether they were right or wrong, regard regardless of how I felt, I wanted to level the playing field. So if you're going to be making political or social posts on a group meant for discussing topics like rendering technology, uh, tutorials, learning, um, and how to be more creative, then you have to be, you have to set a standard where if you're going to allow one thing, you have to allow the other. So if you're going to allow political posts, you have to allow the other side of the spectrum to share what they want. You can't choose, you know, you can, you can do whatever you want with your group, but it just makes you a hypocrite. And there's nothing more despicable than people who have double standards and people who have, who are hypocrites. So that is the real, real talk there. So I was removed from the group and I don't care. The Octane group is still filled with plenty of people who are marvelous at their job, are marvelous with the technology. They know their stuff and the group should prosper. I thoroughly agree that the, the group should prosper, even regardless of me being kicked out for whatever reason. Um, but I don't want to be associated with a group that is going to hold double standards and show themselves to be hypocrites. So I don't even care that I'm gone. There are better groups out there like the Gaia community where we share mostly among ourselves the technology and the know-how. And I see beautiful works of art from all walks of life and I love that more so than anything else um, on Facebook. And that, that's the only reason why I'm on Facebook really is because of the Gaia community. Um, I decided that I'm going to see my family more in person rather than um, using Facebook to get in touch with them. I'm going to drive to their house. I'm going to drive to their state. And I have been doing that. And I think if you are in a p uh, position where you can do that, you should be doing that. Um, and obviously all well, that's my opinion, but we were better off as a people when we were closer together in person than pretending like we're close, but further away. Um, and I want to use that as a segue into why I even got into 3D, um, primarily 
the landscaping side of things, the nature side of things. And simply because nature is unassuming, it doesn't have an, ag an agenda, it doesn't discriminate, it doesn't have different ideas of how different groups of people should be treated regardless of their political or social standing. It is just there, it does what it does, and you can find nature in, you can find beauty in nature in all of its worst forms. And I love that. You can go out on a bleak day and still capture something beautiful in nature. And it's the perfect escapism. That's the reason why I got into 3D, is to escape from the minutia of the day, because my entertainment that I would normally open up on my TV or on my computer and watch to get away from the stresses of the day all started implementing these agendas and these things into it that I wanted to escape from. So luckily I can control that to, for myself with 3D landscaping. I can open up a program, the program is the program, and I can do what I want and I can render something out and I can have it as dull and boring or as vibrant and extravagant as I want. And nature allows you to do that. And so I can come home from a stupid stressful day uh, where I hear people bickering and bantering about all sorts of things that either pertains to them or does not pertain to them. I don't have to hear opinions. I can just open up the program and I can create. And I love that. So I put together a few things here of why I got into nature. Um, and they are images and these are some of my favorite images that I have found over the years and there's I only picked a few of them some of them are painting some of them are photography um, but they're all extremely beautiful so here's one of them let me go ahead and pull this over into the recording window so this is a painting and I don't know who it is I would love to give credit to the people who uh, drew these or took these photos but I I don't know who did and they don't have their names on them but this is a painting and it, it includes people ships whatnot but I really love this color palette it's gray it's blue it's white it's dark there's a whole bunch of uh, even if they're all kind of bland they all tell a story you have the um, subsurface scattering on the waves here where the light is penetrating the waves you have the foam on top you have the dark clouds that are kind of encompassing this left side that just draws you in and you're hoping that these guys that are sailing that way are not going to get screwed over it's a very pretty painting in my opinion it's actually this image is what I have on my dash in my car so when I turn on my car and it pops up on the screen this is the background for it because it's just a beautiful image and I like it but it's also nature at one of its worst. It's a storm coming in, the ship is capsizing or sinking. There are people on the ship that weren't able to get off. It just tells a story, and I love that. It, there's no political agenda, there's no social agenda. It's just nature being nature, and I can highly respect that. I respect nature to its fullest. I don't want to screw with it, I just want to recreate it and this right here I think is a good representation of that. So let's go ahead and go to the next one. Hopefully it'll just pop up in, in that area. And this is probably nature in its most serene. So you have a nice beautiful warm color palette. Um, just trees on both sides. You have these leading lines with the trail. It's just a very pretty image. And I look at these all the time. I'm looking at these daily. For inspiration whether it's images that I took or video footage that I took or that somebody else took and I like this one because this doesn't necessarily tell a story but it draws you in because it's just a beautiful image it has beautiful colors and you can kind of see that there is a man-made trail there but it doesn't look like it's well traveled so um, just barely enough traveled where the tire marks in the path remain and that's about it and this is a painting that I really liked and again it's just a really pretty image where you have this volcano erupting in the background this volcano doesn't care who you are it doesn't care what you are it doesn't care how rich or poor you are it's just going to erupt and it's gonna do its thing and this water here the waterfall that comes down from this lake um, how the sun here is bleeding through the freaking 
uh, fumes and plumes of the smoke from the, the volcano. It, whoever drew this, whoever painted this, knew what they were doing, and they captured nature in one of its finest. And this is oftentimes the effect that I'm trying to go for in my own renders. This one right here, again, it's a misty, foggy day. Um, but you have some really awesome contrasting colors. You have this green, you have this orange, you have this dark black wood, um, you have this light fog coming in, It's being the light's being scattered in it, and it's just a very pretty image. And I can look at these all day. It's almost therapeutic. So when you spend all day bickering and arguing over trivialities that either affect you or don't, it doesn't even matter, the one thing that you want to do at the end of the day is come home and just relax. And nature provides that it's again it's unassuming it doesn't care what you are or who you are you can look at it and you can appreciate it because it is a raw form you, you can't manipulate nature to bend to your will and to your agenda and again here we just have these awesome beautiful yellow leaves this really bright white wood it is just another one of those images that I can look at and I just get captivated in. Um, and all these image I, images I have used as references um, and even as wallpaper. I like putting them as a wallpaper. Uh, and just to get off topic real quick, a lot of people have asked me why I don't keep my icons visible on my desktop and I hide my uh, taskbar. The reason why is because I like looking at my background and picking out the details. I use my wallpaper on my desktop as my uh, inspiration. I'll find something I like, I'll put it up there, I will remove anything that can uh, be distracting or take away from the image that I have, and I will just gaze at it, painting, pointing out details that I want to try to implement into my own projects. So that's the reason why I do that. It works for me, it probably won't work for everybody, but it works for me, and um, this image here was my wallpaper for a good portion of a year, and uh, I still look at it to this day. Uh, some of you know that I'm a pilot. I like flying. Um, I like being in a plane. I like seeing the earth from above, and I am also captivated by clouds. I can. My wife always tells me that my head is in the clouds, and that's because it is. I'm constantly looking up in the sky. Um, I'm always looking at clouds, I'm looking at their patterns, their formations, whether or not they're rugged or they're fluffy. And this image right here was just a very pretty image that I really liked. It's just this big cumulus cloud, um, a little bit of offshoots here, and it just, it being a black and white image just really drew me in, um, and it just looked pretty. Again, right here, this is a... The image of this is called Gold Hills. I wish I knew the photographers and the painters, like I said before, but I, I just don't know who they are. Um, but this image here, I just want to be here. Like, I want to be in this valley right here, trekking through it and just going on a photography tour, just walking somewhere and just taking images, taking reference photos, and just seeing all of nature's beauty free of people and their ideas and their agendas and just enjoy it. Just be, just escape into it and finally get away from all of the crap that is just going on in today's society. It doesn't matter what side of the political or social spectrum you are, you're on, both sides are crap. And they both have done their job at destroying any escapism that we can all have and enjoy together. Um, and nature just can provide that. And doesn't matter who you are. Again, nature, even in its most bleak, can still be beautiful. You, you can have a nice clear day and get really awesome photos, but even on a foggy, bleak day, you can still get something that is very pretty. This is one of my all-time favorite paintings that I've been able to find. Um, and this is actually my wallpaper right now, and it's been my wallpaper for about two and a half years. Uh, for both my work computer and my home computer. And I just love the rock details that the painter put in. I love the lighting. Uh, you even have these tall mountain peaks up here that you would probably not notice if you weren't looking around. And it, the, the mountains themselves look like they kind of blend in with the, cl the clouds. There are people down here hunting deer 
there's a dead deer right here there's a little encampment down here so it it, it just shows nature in everything that it that it is people being people yes but also death life you have beauty you have this lake back here with the fine layer of mist right here that just it, everything just looks beautiful and you have this waterfall coming down the rocks and this is one of my all-time favorite images I use it as a reference all the time and you'll know this might be recognizable I recently did a render probably a month or two ago um, where I tried to do this exact look and I wish I had the render on me it's on the Gaia Facebook page um, but I created a VDB uh, cloud and a little mountain peak and I made it darker than what this image is but I tend to like more dark images uh, they fit better for my backgrounds especially when I'm waking up really early in the morning they don't burn my eyes um, but I tried to make the cloud layer uh, modulate against the the rocks of my mountain that I created and the lighting is similar and this image right here is just a very beautiful image this is just another one of those foggy trail um, images that has a really good balance of colors that I find to be attractive and this one right here again this one I found on a, a website I wish I knew who took the photo but I recently tried to make and you might notice that this color palette is actually what I chose for uh, the logo or the image for the discord group is this color palette just purples and blues and whites um, with a little bit of color strewn around the trees of course I didn't do that but in any case just again it's just a bleak day if any other day you're out there you'd be like oh I wish I could see the sky I wish I can see the you know the Sun but you don't have to always see these things that tend to bring things out in a vibrant manner sometimes bleak and dull color palettes can be just as pretty this is kind of haunting it's like a haunting image and I love it and then this one some of you might recognize <clears throat> and you might even know the artist I used to have a couple of them there's one that's kind of similar to this but there's a deer um, standing off to the side and this simple artistic style can still be very pretty and this is very pretty to my eyes and even in the most simplest forms of art nature can still be pretty it's really hard to find something in nature that can just be ugly when you have the right lighting and the right setup you can escape into nature a lot easier than you can into anything else you can open up a TV show and you can binge watch a whole series, but at the end, what do you have left? You can go through and watch the same thing, or you can get out in the nature and see something different. It, different lighting conditions can bring out different details that you may have missed. You can go to an entirely different location. It's just so much better, in my opinion, to get off the couch, get away from the computer, get away from the TV, and just get out in nature and just see things and experience things. And it doesn't even have to be something that you need money for. You can go on a walk. You can go outside of your door. Just walk down the street. Go look at a tree. Go look at the bark on the tree. It's very stupid easy. You can go look at the bark of the tree and just fixate your eyes on the details of the bark. And just try to understand the patterns that you're seeing on the bark or the leaves. Or look at the tree with the sun behind it and see how the leaves react with the light and you can get a totally different experience that doesn't require drugs doesn't require any certain person pushing an agenda on you you can just literally get outside even right now it's foggy uh, it might snow but one of my favorite times to go outside and look is at night when it's foggy and snowing because it's dead silent and you can see the lights of the city in the background that gives the overall atmosphere of where I'm at this really haunting appeal and it's beautiful I can stay outside and look at that all day if I could if I if I wouldn't freeze to death I could do it all day and all night and just right up the road from me is a school bus stop where they keep all the school buses and there's a flagpole and any small amount of breeze will move this flagpole uh, uh, chain or rope or whatever that they have their pulley system that they're using and the metal 
from the pulley system will clang against the metal of the flagpole just every once in a while just hit it and it just gives this bell ring uh, that you can hear from my house and across the whole neighborhood and when it's foggy and overcast um, and it's dead silent there's no noises from vehicles no noises from people it just is it's like a ghost town but there's thousands of people around me and it's just extremely beautiful there's just small things like that that you can experience but you're not going to get that just sitting in front of a tv getting out meeting people experiencing these things with people in my opinion is one of the more important things that we can do as a society nowadays we would have less bickering we would have less anger we would have less resentment towards each other if we all just got away from ourselves and started focusing on other people it doesn't matter who you are what you are what political side you're on or what side of society that you align with it doesn't matter you just got to get out and know your neighbor and nature is one of the easiest ways to do that in my opinion I mean when I was doing my hikes uh, this past summer recording videos for you guys and I hope you guys enjoyed those I don't know if you did or not but I hope you guys enjoyed those I met hundreds of people literally hundreds just the first hike that I did the Lake Blanche I there's hundreds of people going up there and they all passed me some of them stopped to talk some of them stopped to help me I was carrying 60 pounds of equipment with me up this seven mile hike to this lake almost all uphill in a steep incline and I'm not the most physically fit I'm not like overweight but I'm not physically fit I don't go out and exercise um, but I made it up there and I had this group of people that came from the other side of the world just to come to Utah and visit this lake and do this hike and they stuck with me they we talked and we talked about how beautiful the mountainside that we we're on was how beautiful Utah was nature brought us together and not once did anybody bring up politics not once did anybody bring up societal issues and we were all different people from different walks of life and nature brought us closer together and I will cherish that moment till the day I die because I got to know my fellow man and that's all that matters to me anyways I can make landscape stuff all day every day for you guys and I will love it I love doing it I've loved doing it for years now and I will never stop doing it um, but I just think that we need to find something that brings us all together and one of the best ways to do that in my opinion will, will be nature and, I, and I, that's coming from a biased standpoint because I am out in nature every day and I do this stuff for a, you know not for a living but you know it's a really good hobby for me keeps me from going into depression ruts which I was running into well before I was doing this it keeps my mind focused I have goals I can set it gets me active with people even if it is virtually you guys are all very respectful people uh, I've never once had an issue with anybody except for like bots that comment things about you know click on this link to go do this that stuff I just <clears throat> remove that stuff altogether but anybody whether you agree or disagree with how I do things or uh, or how I teach all of you guys have been respectful in it I accept criticisms I am open to criticism and I don't ever attack people for providing criticism and I never have and I never will and you can go all the way back to my deviant art days when I was really early in view <clears throat> let me go ahead and change an image real quick I'm gonna go back to this one just because I really love it that way you guys aren't looking at the same thing um, if you go back to my deviant art days when I first got into view the f very last thing that I would put on the description for the image I did was please provide your criticisms I want to learn I want to I want to do better I want to know what would make this a better image or what I could do in the future and people would provide those criticisms and I would accept them openly I would never dis be disgruntled by somebody I, I might not agree with some of their critiques but we would talk about it we wouldn't argue we would talk and I've actually talked with a lot of people who disagreed with some things that I've done over um, you know in discord or uh, Skype back when I used Skype or I even had uh, phone conversations with people I'm like hey I'm not available right now to get on the computer and just chat but you can call me 
I can take a phone call and this is my number. Go ahead and call me and we'll just talk about it. And we had a dis discussion. We didn't have an argument. It wasn't a debate. It was a discussion on why I did certain things. And then that person provided why those certain things would probably be better put somewhere else or not used at all. And it was a great discussion. And we're missing that nowadays. People just argue. People either think they're right and the other person's wrong or people are nihilistic and they think everybody's wrong. And the thing is, is we as a people only got to where we are now because we all put our minds together and we all helped each other out constructively. There have been bumps, rocky roads, major mistakes, major mishaps, but that is just human nature. Nobody is innocent of that. Nobody is guilty of that. I mean, or nobody is like, no matter where you go, the history of people is always going to be filled with mishaps. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter who you are, what you are, how old you are, how young you are, how rich you are, how poor you are. Every society on this planet has some kind of baggage that they have in their history. Every single one. Nobody is uh, free of that baggage. Not a single person, not a single race, not a single group of people. All of them have some kind of baggage. And it's not up to us to focus on that baggage for other people. It's up to us as people to put aside that baggage and come together under common goals or and not even common goals. They don't even have to be common goals. We just have to come together as a people and just ignore the baggage because focusing on the past is not going to fix the present. It's not going to fix the future. The past is the past, and there's no point in focusing on that. You can't erase the past. You can't fix the past. But if you, if we all just stop biting at each other's throats right now, things will get better in the long run. It will take time, and I'm preaching. Nobody wants to get onto a YouTube video and hear almost 30 minutes of preaching, but that is what it is right now. And I bring this up because people asked. People have asked me, hey, where have you been on the Octane channel or Facebook group? Where have you, why haven't you posted on these certain things? Well, quite frankly, it's because people suck. People do. Like, I. I like my group of people that I've created here. You, All of you guys that follow me and watch my videos, all of you have been fantastic. The Gaia group has been fantastic. But there have been people who have infiltrated these groups that I'm talking about right now, these fantastic groups, who I've had to block or I've had to ignore because they are just people who cannot just go into a group and just leverage the group for its purpose. They have to make it intoxicating somehow. They have to bring in something that does not pertain to anything that re, uh, that it, it, those groups were meant to be for. If you want to bring in your toxic crap, you can create your own group and do that. But I'm not going to have it in mind. And I'm sure as hell not going to allow other groups that shouldn't be focusing on that to have double standards. So if anybody is out there even listening to this, and got this far into the video, I definitely appreciate that. But now you know why I left. It's, I, the, the group just got way too toxic, and I was not going to stand for the double standards and the hypocrisy that the group was showing, and they didn't like that, so they kicked me out. Just straight up. They kicked me out, and I don't care. I really don't care. Uh, I'm only telling, I'm only making this video um, because I care about the overall uh, uh, reasoning behind it, but I don't care that I was kicked out of the Octane Channel. This is about the only time that I've brought it up to anybody, other than my wife. I told my wife, hey, they kicked me out of the Octane Channel like two seconds after they did, and then never brought it up again, and it's only being brought up now because somebody had asked me, and I thought it'd be a better video, a uh, better put in a video. So, um, that is the real talk, and I don't have these often, and I don't want to make them often. I'd rather focus on the beauty of nature, and you know, creating cool landscapes and showing you guys how to do it and just sharing amongst the community. So this won't be the last video probably like this, but it won't be for a long time, hopefully. I try not to make these things common. So anyways, thank you guys for being awesome. Um, the last video I uploaded uh, has received some uh, great comments on it and 
uh, there is a video that I need to make that I have been promising a, uh, a fellow landscape artist for a long time and I'm gonna go ahead and do that now so I hope to see you guys in that next video uh, that should be coming up here in maybe an hour or two thank you guys